Hi guys, I'm Phil Sturpey. In this video, I'm going to show you how to bootstrap EC2 instances with user data from the AWS console. Bootstrapping is an important aspect of provisioning instances in the cloud. If you want to implement a truly elastic set of assets that allow you to spin up or discard servers at a moment's notice, you need to be able to configure an instance at startup. This might involve installing some software at initial boot or configuring the machine to behave in a desired manner. To bootstrap an EC2 instance in Amazon Web Services, you need to pass it some user data at launch time. User data can be up to 16 kilobytes of data and typically takes the form of a script. When you launch an EC2 instance, it will be based upon an Amazon machine image or AMI. These are typically Linux or Windows server images, although you can create any custom type that you wish. If you choose an off-the-shelf AMI created by Amazon, it will contain one of two services, Cloud Init for Linux or EC2 config for Windows. These services run during the initial boot and check for any user data that you might have passed to the instance. If your user data can be parsed as a valid script, then it will be executed. If not, it's ignored. This is an example of a script we might pass to a Linux machine. It's a bash script we could pass as user data that would execute when the server was loading. This is an example PowerShell script that we might pass to a Windows server to bootstrap that. Let's look at the mechanics for passing user data to a launching instance. I'm going to choose a Windows server because I have a useful PowerShell script I can use. Rather than go with a micro, I'm going to pick a general purpose M1 medium as my instance type. I'm then going to click on the configure instance details button. There are a number of options I can select in here. The only one I want is user data, which is buried down in advanced details. Now it's in this box that I can enter my script, be it a PowerShell script or a Bash script. But rather than enter the script directly, I could actually choose it from a file. So let me just pick this button here, pick the file, click open. Now you can't actually see the script here. Let me just switch into Notepad++. This is the actual script that I'm passing as user data. The script downloads a number of files from an S3 bucket, including a Chef Solo installer, installers for the likes of Notepad++, and a cookbook. And once it's downloaded all these assets and installed Chef Solo, it then leaves Chef Solo to perform the rest of the installation. Let me click Review and Launch. So I'm happy with all those details. I go for Launch, and the only thing it needs now is a key pair. And this is a key pair that I'm going to use. Click Launch. This will take a couple of minutes to boot and then allow the script to run and perform all the installations. So I'll wait for a couple of minutes and we can connect to the instance to see if the script has run. OK, well I've left it a few minutes to boot up. In fact, I left it a little longer than that, near 15. Because this is a Windows server, there's typically a delay on the first launch before the password can be generated. I think it's been long enough now. So I'll click Connect. And then go and see if we can retrieve the password. That's fine. If the password hadn't been generated yet, there would have been a warning saying I needed to come back a little later on. So I need to pick my key file, which is this one, with my copy of the key file, which is going to allow me to decrypt the password. And there we have the password, which I'll need to connect remotely to my server. So let's copy that. And let's download the remote desktop file, the RDP file, which I'll click now. Let me log in as administrator. What I'm expecting to see once I connect this remote machine is that all the assets have been downloaded from S3 and the installers have executed. So we go looking at the C drive. Oops. This is not what you would normally find in a Windows server. For example, you don't have a folder called Chef and you don't have a folder called Ops Code, nor do you have these files. These have been generated by my script. So my script downloaded a number of assets, put them in a folder called Chef, ran the installer for Chef Solo, and as 
my script was running, I was writing to this file. I was downloading various assets and I executed um, the Chef installer. So as you can see, this proves that my user data script, my PowerShell script, was parsed by EC2 config and executed at launch of the server. One last thing I'd like to show you. Perhaps it may be that you want to bootstrap your instances, but PowerShell scripts or Bash scripts aren't appropriate. Perhaps you'd like to implement some kind of business logic, such as when this server starts up, I want it to act as a video encoder and act accordingly. Or perhaps it should be a, an image thumbnailer and perform the tasks appropriate to that. So I just need to pass it some kind of code. Well, if in the user data, I simply pass in a code, such as a, the number one or two, or the word video or the word thumbnail, then within the instance, I may have a service running and it could look at this URL. 169.254, 169.254, and that is consistent, by the way, for all instances. And then user data. You could use this URL to retrieve the user data passed in, such as your thumbnail code or your video encoder code, and act accordingly. There you have it. In this video, I've shown how easy it is to bootstrap EC2 instances with user data from the AWS console. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to comment and suggest more video topics. Most of all, don't forget to subscribe to keep up with my videos as I release them. Bye for now.